Halo fans! We are gathered here today to discuss a problem with Halo Infinite that I honestly haven't heard anyone talk about or bring up quite yet. A problem so massive that it could make or break Halo Infinite as a game. No, I'm kidding, it's not that serious. But it is a problem that given my seasoned and engaged history with the matter, well, I do feel uniquely qualified to talk about it. The problem, you ask? Other than over 50% of you watching being unsubscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button and the bell because Halo Infinite is right around the corner and we're gonna frickin' tear it up. The problem is, Halo Infinite doesn't appear to have assassinations. Or, at least, we haven't seen any. Which is weird, at this stage. In this video, I'm going to go over the possibilities as to why Halo Infinite might not have assassinations and then make the case as to why they are an absolute must for the game. Both from a gameplay perspective, and with Halo Infinite multiplayer being free to play, a monetary one. Now I know there are going to be some radicates in the comments saying, who cares, or it's not that deep, bro. And to them I say, one, get your ass in my Pokeball, and two, the reaction to my tweet about this and the hundreds of thousands of views on my assassination videos over the years says otherwise. So let's stab, break, bend, and snap our way into this. So I just referenced that I was thoroughly qualified to discuss this highly advanced and intellectual topic. Let me quickly elaborate. Myself as a player, I have 1,546 assassinations in Halo The Master Chief Collection, 6,682 assassinations in Halo 5, the roughly 14,000 assassinations I have in Halo 4, plus a few thousand air assassinations because they're counted separate from the original assassinations. Also, I can't get the exact number on my Halo 4 assassination count. The Halo 4 metal stat tracking API is either dead or down. So uh, yeah, can't get the exact number, but it's around that range. And I have 22,414 assassinations on Halo Reach for a grand total of 47,642 assassinations across all Halo games that have assassinations. If we take my kills from those same games, they are 233,581 total kills, which if we round up, means that roughly one out of every five kills I have ever gotten has been an assassination. And really the point I'm trying to make here is that assassinating people is hands down my favorite thing to do in Halo. So when I saw this moment in the Halo Infinite multiplayer reveal trailer, I was like, oh. She's the one, Cole. Oh. Oh my. And then he just, doesn't assassinate him. Why? 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 Wow. Yeah, th there's gonna be people saying, oh, but he went to go to pick up the other weapon and show that off, but it's like, they're gonna craft that encounter around assassinating that guy in any other Halo game. This sent up a red flag for me for two reasons. Uh, one, this was the perfect opportunity to show a sick play and then falling straight into a new assassination that we haven't seen before. And two, if I'm not mistaken, every grand Halo multiplayer reveal since Halo Reach has had an assassination in the trailer. Every single one, Halo Reach, Halo 4, Halo 5, there have been assassinations in all the multiplayer reveal trailers. By competing in war games, a vast simulated experience player and campaign is erased aboard Infinity. Your every action affects the story. First Victory! So if we've seen an assassination in every single Halo multiplayer reveal trailer since they were a thing, it's reasonable to assume that if we don't see one here, they may not be in the game, or at least not at launch. So this leads me to three possible scenarios. Assassinations are in the game, but not shown for some odd reason. They are not in the game at launch, but they'll be coming later. Or they are scrapped with no plans to return. Now while I'm sure that scenario 1 and 2 are the most likely, the fact that it's possible that they aren't returning in Infinite scares me, and decisions like this have been made in the past. So, for the sake of this video, assuming the worst case scenario, I want to make the case to 343 in case they see this video as to why assassinations should be in Halo Infinite, and why that benefits both the players and 343 as a company. So, let's start with the practical reasons they should be in the game, and then move on to gameplay. So as we all probably know by now, Halo Infinite multiplayer is free to play. And being free to play, the game is going to rely on microtransactions to generate money in the form of a battle pass. 343 has confirmed that there will be no loot boxes or RNG forms of microtransactions. However, the way they have worded it in blog posts in the past, 
kind of makes me think that it's going to be possible that we'll be able to purchase certain armor sets or cosmetic components individually instead of through a battle pass. And in my opinion, assassinations are an absolute golden opportunity to be able to generate revenue each Halo Infinite season by putting new animations in the battle pass and making them available for purchase outside of that. On top of being a great revenue source, if 343 added assassination animations that we could get through challenges, like as challenge rewards and stuff like that, I think that would be another great way of showing off your achievements and getting a badass animation. Let's say like the elite air to ground assassination in Halo Reach. If there was a, if they came to hear me beg style challenge where you had to assassinate an elite by jumping from a really high cliff uh, X amount of times, I think that would be an awesome way for them to introduce assassinations into uh, gameplay, you know, playing for our armor, playing the game to unlock cool assassination animations on top of obviously them being in the battle pass and such. I do hope in Halo Infinite there is a good balance between armor you can acquire for free and armor that is acquired through the battle pass. I think they really need to nail that balance for what they have to work. So since Halo Reach, many other games have adopted assassinations and implemented them into their own customization and battle pass structure. Games like Titanfall 2, Modern Warfare, That's what I thought. Apex Legends, and many others. But in my opinion, Halo has always done assassinations better than these other games. A common flaw in my opinion with these other systems are their length. Animations in Modern Warfare take a long time, animations in Apex Legends take even longer, dare I say forever. And another pretty big problem is how they take all control away from the player when you perform them. What makes Halo Assassination so unique and great in my mind is that while the animation is being performed, you don't exactly feel yanked out of the gameplay as much, right? You retain the ability to look around you, gauge your surroundings, and keep an eye out for your next target. You still have some semblance of agency with Halo Assassinations. Being able to look around allows you to look at someone who's trying to melee you and actually protect yourself from getting backsmacked because while you're assassinating someone, you can still be backsmacked. However, if your camera is actually looking at the person trying to backsmack you, it won't let them do it. So while you are still locked in an animation, you have still the ability to get information about your surroundings and potentially try to prevent someone from killing you. It's not much, but it offers you a small amount of control and defense once you commit to an animation. Also, don't get me wrong, the assassination animations in these other games are absolutely sick, uh, but Halo's system has really always been superior in my eyes. Now what hasn't been superior about Halo's assassination system is the way you actually choose which animation you perform. So let's get into that. Assassinations are another form of player expression, right? Some people like wrestling animations, some people like stealthy animations, some people like neck breaking animations, and some people like downright wacky and insane animations like Supernova and Halo 5. Player expression seems to be a big design pillar of Halo Infinite multiplayer, and we need a better way to choose what animations we actually use in game. Now, Halo Reach and Halo 4 had great systems that performed different assassination animations based on which angle you hit a player's back from. But with Halo 5's edition of DLC assassinations, outside of the base set, if you wanted to use one of these animations, you would need to select it in the menu, and when you went to assassinate someone, it would only ever perform that specific animation. Unless it was in the air, or in air to ground, of course. Personally, I think variety is the spice of life, and where Halo Infinite can really break new ground here is taking inspiration from Titanfall 2's system and improving on it. Titanfall 2 had a feature that you can enable, which had the game randomly choose an animation from the player's unlocked assassinations to use. But what if there was an animation that you don't like that you had unlocked? Then you were out of luck. What Halo Infinite should do, assuming there are assassinations, please 343, is allow you to make a custom set of your favorite animations and have the game randomly select from those. Bada bing, bada boom, perfect animation system. Imagine in Halo Infinite if we got samurai assassinations using the new Yoroi Armor's blade. You can make a set of just those animations and roleplay as a lethal Spartan samurai grapple shotting around the map and cutting down your enemies. I don't care bro, it's, shit's cool, alright? So to wrap up the monetary and practical side of things, I think Halo Infinite has a chance to improve on the assassination system of the past and also has a great opportunity to add tons and tons of these animations. Literally, the sky is the limit with these. You could do something crazy wacky, something really stealthy and cool. It is just more content that you can pump out over time that I myself will always pay for because I think they're awesome and I know there's a lot of people like me. So they're a great, great opportunity to generate revenue via the battle pass or microtransactions and also a great way for players to grow grind challenges and unlock new assassinations through those challenges and allow them to show off their achievements in-game via cool animation. So, other than assassinations being a great monetization opportunity for 343 and an excellent customizable way of player expression, 
why should they be in Halo Infinite? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this one other than because they're f***ing awesome. An ostentatious display! With all that said and shown, this is going to be the end of the video. So thank you for watching and listening to me wax poetic about these admittedly sort of insignificant little animations that appear in some of the Halo games. To me, they're everything. To some people, they're nothing. But I think there's enough of us out there that enjoy assassinations enough to justify them being in Halo Infinite. Now, again, I do not think they're not going to be in Halo Infinite. I think the most likely scenario is we just didn't see it in the trailer for some reason. But on the off chance that 343 maybe just decided it wasn't a priority, you know, I hope this uh, potentially convinces them otherwise. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it. It helps me out a lot. You hear a lot of YouTubers talk about it. It genuinely helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. I have tons of content just like this coming up. And I'm going to be going ham with videos in Halo Infinite. So definitely subscribe because you're not going to want to miss what I put out. So thank you everybody so much for watching. As always, happy assassinating. And I will see you next time. Ja, mata. If I should...